What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Austin Silver. In today's video, we are gonna talk all about MetaTrader 4. We're gonna talk about why this platform is so important for you as a retail trader. Majority of the Forex community is using this platform to enter and exit their trades. Now, I use a separate platform to actually do my chart analysis, but having your MetaTrader set up properly is very important if you're going to be a consistently profitable trader. If you're going to really treat this like a business and try to be here for the long term, like I know you are, then you're going to want to not only have your trading view set up, which you saw in one of my previous videos, I'll link it up here and down below, but you're also going to want to have your execution platform set up, which is here, MetaTrader 4. Now, there are other platforms like MetaTrader 5, CTrader, all these other things, and I'm not here to knock them. I am only here to show you why I choose MetaTrader, why I prefer this platform, and why I can't really see myself changing platforms anytime soon at least. So MetaTrader 4 is probably one of the oldest um, execution platforms for retail traders like you and I that exists. As you can see here, it was created in 2005. CTrader is old as well, but MetaTrader 4 always has been, in my opinion, a little bit more user-friendly. So I just said I wasn't going to knock the other ones, and I'm not knocking CTrader, but I would say as far as being user-friendly, nothing compares to MetaTrader. And I can actually take that a step further to just say I have MetaTrader here filming this video on a Mac laptop. This is a MacBook Pro 2015. It works for me because I was able to find the DMG download file for MetaTrader 4 for a Mac. So if you just type in here, MetaTrader 4 for Mac, you'll be able to find those download files as well. But if you need it for a PC, like I know most of the people watching this do, all you need to do is type in MetaTrader 4 in your Google search and a bunch of results are going to pop up. The first one, of course, is going to direct you to their website. Now you can go there and download it, but they're going to try to like manipulate you a little bit into downloading MetaTrader 5. But in reality, you want to make sure you're downloading the MetaTrader 4 DMG file. If you scroll down, on this Google search, you're going to be able to find how you can download it for your phone and also other sources to get it. So if, if for some reason this first link is not working, just scroll down and you can find many other sources. And if you can't find it, send me a message, drop a comment in this video. I will make sure that we can get you a link to download MetaTrader. Now, once it's downloaded, you're going to have a program on your desktop that you're going to open up and you're not going to really know what anything looks like. The final piece of that program looks something like this. Once you have it set up for the style of trading that you do. Now this is set up here for my ASFX training program. This is what I teach in my course and this is what I use every single day to execute my winning trades. But when you first open up MetaTrader, it's going to look something like this, right? Look familiar with all these weird white grid lines back black background and these neon green bars. So I think in order for us to get from here to here, I need to piece it together for you slowly. So let's again start here at the top left of our screen. This is the entire MetaTrader 4 window when you first open it, when you first come in after you've downloaded the file from the internet. You can see at the top, I have my account number. I opened up a practice account just to make this video with Awanda. Awanda's my broker here in the United States. They're regulated and that's why I choose to use them. You can see it says it's a demo account and then it gives you the currency pair that you're looking at as well as the time frame. From here, if we move across from left to right, starting at the top of our screen, you'll see it almost looks like any other program. You have your file, your view, insert, charts, tools, window, and help buttons. Those are all going to be useful to you as you're kind of familiarizing yourself with the platform. For me, all I use here, as far as the file view, insert charts, all that, all I'll occasionally use is here in file. I'll maybe set up a new chart with this, or when I want to save something, I'll use save as here, or when I want to open account or log into a new account, I can do that from file as well. There's nothing really to print. I don't really need to open the data folder yet. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. But as far as just preliminary stuff, setting up your first account, getting started with MetaTrader, opening an account, saving your chart layouts, and opening a new chart are the important pieces you need to know from the file tab here. Beneath the file tab, you'll see a little box with a green plus arrow here. This will open you up to select a currency pair. You can see they'll have separate drop down menus that you'll be able to use to find the pair that you're looking for. All you have to do is click and it'll change. 
you'll know that you're looking at a different currency pair because it'll say the pair's name here in the top left and also here in the center of the screen at the top as well. So two places you can see exactly what currency pair you're looking at. Even, I forgot, the third one down here at the bottom too on your tabs. Now, next to the box with the green arrow, you'll see that you're able to set these profiles. I have a couple old ones saved that I used to use. The profiles will actually change the entire chart, the candles, the background, the time scale, everything. Profiles are not really necessary for what we're trying to do. When we want to talk about customizing the chart, changing the background, changing the candles to something that fits to you, or maybe to if you're trying to customize it like how I have mine here, you don't need those profiles. We're going to come to the templates and indicators in a few minutes, and that's what you're going to need to be able to customize the charts. But Sticking with the plan here, let's move left to right. You'll see there's a couple more tabs. These four are important. So let's talk about the first one. This is Market Watch. This is where you can see your currency pairs open on the left side of your screen. You can click and drag this bar around the screen if you want to, but I personally like to leave it on the left side. So you're looking at the screen now and you're probably thinking, Austin, where are all the currency pairs? I only see a few. All you have to do is right click here in the white space and hit show all. The rest of them will pop up. You can actually click and drag these and it'll change them in order. So if you want to alphabetize them, you can do that no problem. Just click and drag, you'll move them around. If you want to apply this to the chart you're looking at, what do you think you do? Click and drag right onto the chart and look, it changed it to Euro AUD. So very simple there, that's your market watch. Next to that, you have your data window. The data window isn't important. I'll never have it open, it just takes up space. Next to the data window is the navigator. The navigator is good because if you're using indicators or if you're using expert advisors, anything like that, this is where you're gonna be able to access them pretty quickly. If you have multiple accounts, like you can see I have some of my older Traders Way accounts still here and things like that, you can access them through the navigator as well. And that's just right here, the little folder with the gold star. Next to that is our terminal. This is where you're gonna find your account balance, your exposure, your account history, the news, any alerts, your inbox, right? Things like that. Any articles that are important. But m the most important thing with the terminal is that you're going to see your balance, your trade, your size, your stop, your entry, your take profit, the price, the commission you're paying, and your profit or loss. Everything is going to be here in your terminal. When I'm trading, I would recommend that you keep the terminal closed. If you were to place a trade, like let's say, for example, if we just for this video, if we open up a sell order right here, when, one, once you open the trade, you'll see all those numbers pop up. You'll want to be able to click that X only if you're trying to close the trade. So when you're in the middle of your trade, I would keep the terminal closed like that. But when you're ready to close or ready to enter, I would open the terminal up and use it for what it gives you. It does give you a lot of valuable information. Once you've entered a trade, just another little side note, let's say we were to enter a buy. If you're using one click trading, like I just did here, that's using the sell or the buy buttons here at the top left of the screen. You can change the lot size right in here. See how I'm set on 0.01? If you're using one click trading, you're gonna be able to click and drag from your entry price to set your stop loss and your take profit. You see how it says stop loss and take profit right there? I can drag those then instead of having to manually input the numbers, right? Much easier. So that's another reason why I prefer to do my trading here on the desktop rather than on the phone or anything like that. Being able to click and drag my stop to the exact levels that I want it really does help. And when you put your mouse over it, it'll tell you the distance in pips. It's 49.7 pips and it's $3.36, something like that. You know what I mean? So here, that's our uh, terminal and that's our one-click trading. Now, next to the terminal and the one-click trading is the strategy tester. Again, that's for... Um, any type of back testing you want to do, not typical stuff. So you won't need the strategy tester. Here you can open a new order if you use the new order button. For me, I never do this ever. All I like to do is my one click trading. The way you can make one click trading pop up is if you right click anywhere here in the middle of the chart, you see it right there, one click trading, just boom, pop that on and it'll pop right up for you. Moving across here, you'll get into some of the auto trading features and, and EA stuff. I don't do any trading by EA or by you know robots, anything like that. So you can see it's turned off. I don't use it. Now, 
Again, still moving left to right. You want to make sure you're not on a bar chart. For me, I will only use candles and occasionally a line chart, but most of the time I'm right here using candlesticks. And it's very important that you're using candlesticks because they give you a lot more detail about the chart. I have other videos and in the course, I talk a lot about how important it is to use one color candles and why I think you should be doing that. That's, you know, in the trading view video, we go into a little bit of detail about that. But here you can see the candles are actually two different colors. Some are white, some are black on the inside. That signals the difference between the bullish and the bearish candles. We're going to change those colors in a few minutes. Next to the candle buttons, you see the zoom in, zoom out buttons. You can do that by hitting uh, sh command plus command minus, and that'll zoom you in, zoom you out as well. This button right here that says arrange windows on non overlapping tiles will actually pull all of your tabs here at the bottom onto one screen. So you can see every pair on one screen. I don't think you need it. I like to look at one and just blow one up. It's much easier for me. Now, the end here, these last five buttons, very important. First, you want to always keep this one, the scroll, the chart to the end on tick, that selected. What that's going to do is when you're scrolling back, it'll automatically make sure that you can jump right back here to that chart that is ticking. You also want to use this shift end of chart from the right border because what that's going to do is give you some space over here as you're looking for potential analysis, as you're looking at levels that it could be maybe potentially moving to. You want to be able to see that free space. It helps visualize the direction of your trade. So I like to keep both of those selected. If I'm doing back testing, just turn the green one off and it won't skip you to the front. See, now I can scroll back as far as I want. Okay. Now we've covered basically the entire top toolbar. Let me take a sip of my tea. these next three tools are very important. You see the time frames right here, right? The one minute, five minute, 15, all that. You also have time frames right here. Okay. In between, or excuse me, the time frames here are in between two very important buttons. You have your indicator list here, which comes with a bunch of built-in indicators plus my custom ones that I've added here. And then you have templates here. Now templates are what are going to change the back of the entire chart. Templates, if you have indicators on it, are going to actually save together as well. The indicators themselves are more of the pieces that you have that paint the whole picture of the chart. So to get your chart looking how I have mine here, this is a template, but it has indicators added on to it. So what we do again to start piecing that chart together is pretty simple. So let's just look at a 15 minute chart to make it simple so we can see each day. The first thing we're going to do is right click in and go to properties. You see you have a grid here. You can turn that off and that does help, but we can even go past that by going to properties. Properties has a lot of detail. You can show your open, high, low, close, show your ask line, right? You can select the type of candles, your auto scroll, all that stuff. But taking that even deeper would be changing the colors here. You can see we have the background set to black, the foreground set to white, the grid was set to gray, but we turned the grid off. Now, as far as changing the bars, I personally like to change the background to a gray, which I'll select right there. I like to turn the foreground, which is the font to black. So then you can see, I like that text. I don't have the fly in here, the text to be black, which helps stand out on that gray for my bar up. I personally like to make it all black. The reason I make all of my candles black, and again, I talk about this in my trading view video, is because I think it reduces the potential for any emotional reaction to your charts, to your, uh, to any of the movement on price action. So once you have everything basically set to black, it's going to help everything stand out really nicely. So you hit OK, and now you can see candles are all black, background is gray. These vertical lines that run through the charts. Those are your day separators. Those separate the changeover from the end of the New York session here one day into the Asian session the next day. And that's really important too, because for those of you that know my system and know the way that I trade, we box off those sessions and use them to identify which trades are actually the best for that day, which ones have the potential to move for us. So now that we have our charts gray, now that we have our candles black, everything is starting to come together. So let's close the navigator, close the terminal. We can see here, this is what, for me, I like to see my charts look like. I have my one click trading open and I have my black candles. Now I want to add some indicators. Now I'm going to show you how to add indicators here. Then I'm going to show you how to add indicators into the back end if you have your own custom ones that you want to add. So you can quickly just come into custom and start applying your 
excuse me, your indicators. For me, I use a TDI. For those of you that have taken my course, you know I love the TDI. So here's what it looks like when you first apply it. I'll then double click on it, click indicator list, hit edit on the TDI, and I'll come in and I'll start to really customize this thing exactly the way that I like to. So for me, just to be brief with you guys, I don't use volatility bands. So what I can do is actually come to the colors and I can turn these ones here, those blue things, turn those to nothing. I don't even wanna see them. Hit okay, hit close, and then they're gone. Now my TDI looks great. So now what do I wanna to do to save this? Let's just say this is the only indicator I wanted to use. Maybe I wanna put on like an EMA, right? Where's a moving average here? Right, let's say I wanna put on a, an eight exponential so you can put on simple, smooth. Let's do eight exponential. Let's make it yellow. Let's make it thick. Hit okay. There's our eight EMA. Let's just say I wanted my charts to look like this, right? What I would then wanna do is come up here to templates, hit save. Right here, it'll give you your template screen. Save it. When you come back, if for some reason your charts are messed up, all you then have to do is click templates, open up YouTube video, bang. If I wanna change what this looks like here to the one we just made, click up there at templates, boom, YouTube video. You see what I'm saying? So very simple there to change charts, set them, save them, and move forward. Now, to add your own indicators, I know a lot of you guys have questions about that. What you're gonna to wanna to do is come to your finder. If you're on a PC, you're gonna to go to file up here and open data folder, same type of thing. I like to do it just in the back end here on my Mac version. So what I'll do is come to the application, the data folder, I'll hit show package contents. Then I'm gonna to go to drive C and program files. There's another thing you need to click inside program files to get to where we need to be. It's the MT trading MetaTrader 4 terminal. Now you're gonna see two things you need. One is gonna be templates right here. There's our YouTube video template we just saved. So if you have custom templates or you wanna share templates, this is where you can find them. You want .tpl files in here. Those are the ones that are gonna show up. These other ones, .htm, they will not show up here. That's why they didn't. Then you wanna come back a folder and look at the MQL4. Inside MQL4, you'll find indicators. And here's where you can customize your indicators. So what you do is download them offline. If you want these indicators that I have on my screen, the TDI and the ADR and all those things, the, the lot size calculator right here, right? If you want all those indicators that you guys see me use, I can send them to you. And all you would do is add them into your back end here, restart MetaTrader 4, and bang, you'd have all the indicators. So if you wanna add or take some away, all you need to do again, it's package contents, drive C, program files, MT trading, MQL4 indicators, and there they are. Once they're in here, in this indicator folder, all you need to do is click out of that file, out of that folder, restart MetaTrader 4, and they will be here. When you go to custom, they will be right there wherever you put them. Pretty simple, right? So one other indicator that I really do use a lot and that I think, you know, if you're trading actively, you should be using is a lot size calculator. And again, this is something that if you want it, just drop a comment in the video, reach out to me, I can definitely hook it up for you. All you have to do with this is put your stop loss in. Let's say we're doing a 15 pip stop loss and let's say we wanna risk 2% of our account. You hit okay, it'll apply it right here under your one click trading, you see that? Right under the one click trading, it says 15 stop loss, 2% risk, 0.36. That means that I would wanna do a 0 0.36 trade, 0 0.36 lot size on this trade if I'm only looking to risk 2% with a 15 pip stop on this pair. Now watch what happens if I change the currency pair. It'll change that lot. Look, it just went to 0.37 when I changed the pair to AUD USD because the exchange rate between my base currency, which is in dollars in this situation, is different than the base currency in some of these other currency pairs. So as you change it, it's gonna slightly make it, it's gonna make a slight difference in the lot size that you need to trade. So instead of trying to do that math in your head, it's much easier to just let the indicator do it for you. You can calculate it very easily. If you have to change that really quick, you just right click in, go to indicator list, quickly go to lot size calculator, edit it. Let's say you need to do a 25 pip stop, 2% risk, hit okay, hit close, boom. It changes the lot size for you right there. You can see it. So 
that covers the basics of MetaTrader 4. Like I said, I don't do any chart analysis in here. For me, it's not clean enough. I like the detail that I can get on TradingView. And again, I'll link that video right here for you guys if you wanna check that out, how I do the chart analysis, the trend lines, the boxes, the profit loss, the risk reward, all of that stuff is in the TradingView video. But for now, you should see how to add indicators, add templates, use the functionality here of MetaTrader 4, how to download it, how to set up all of your pairs, everything that you need to kind of get MetaTrader 4 up and running that way you can execute the trades, link your brokerage account here so that you can place your trades here and do your chart analysis on tradingview.com. If you have any questions, if I didn't answer anything, just drop a comment below, reach out to me. I'd be happy to make a part two or send you a video personally if you have any questions that you need answered. Subscribe here on YouTube. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash the like button. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video.